wonderful cake. Thank you, Evelyn, for that health nugget. And you touched on some of the information that I will talk about because a lot of foods that we eat will stress us out. So we're going to look at some of those foods also. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, take that off. Okay, I'm Darlene Hall. I'm a registered nurse. I've been a nurse for over 25 years, a long time. And I've seen just about everything. I've worked in psychiatry. I have done, I've been in sales and marketing, on the bedside, emergency rooms. I've done a little bit of everything. And uh, my current job is um, in safety and improvement. But I have a love for health. And this is something that I do because it's a passion for me. So now for the next three days, I will be speaking with you tonight about stress, okay? We're going to talk about stress. How can we overcome stress? Anybody stressed you? <laughs> okay, I, hear, I don't see a lot of hands, but I hear <laughs> blah, 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 blah. So yes, we are stressed, no doubt about that. Tomorrow night, we're going to talk about depression, finding the way out of depression. There are a lot of people that are depressed. And then on Sunday night, we're going to talk about building a better brain. If you change your brain, you can change your life. And I know that I've had to work on my brain to change it. And we can rewire our brains. So tomorrow night, um, depression the way out. And then on Sunday night, we're going to talk about building a better brain. So now we, as women, and I see men here, men are welcome. We're happy you're here because there are things that you can learn also that you can discuss with your um, spouses, with your sisters. So it's for everyone, but specifically for women. And ladies, we need this. And the reason we need this is because it affects our health, okay? We can come down with different types of diseases when we are stressed. Not only that, it affects our children, the children that we're raising. It affects our unborn child, the fetus that's growing um, for pregnant women, and your children's children, and then their offspring. It goes down through four generational lines. And what is interesting is the fact that women carry those stress genes. Men, if they're stressed, if they're stressed during conception, it's passed on. But for women, stressed at any time, it's passed on to their offspring. So we really need that. And stress impacts every facet of our lives. Emotionally, spiritually, it affects our relationships with others. And so we need to get control over stress before stress takes control over us. So I want you to just look at your packets. We have a little packet here for you. And there's lots of good information. I have a little brochure. And it says, um, information, women's stress. You know, we have stressors that really don't affect men. And so there's a lot of good information in this package. You know, women, we have hormonal fluctuations. That's something that really doesn't bother me. So there's a lot of good, inf inf good information in this um, little stress package. Financial tips, um, time management, um, social media, that's another big stressor. So you can take this home with you, read it at your leisure, and you all should have received a stress card. Now, this card is unbelievable. It was featured on Good Morning America, and it's pretty accurate. So the way you use this card, you can just put it in your pocket. It's just like a credit card. And let's just say you're having a stressful day, OK? You just put your finger on that little black dot right there in the center, and it measures what's going on in your body. When we are stressed, our blood vessels constrict. And when they constrict, there's not a lot of blood flow. So then that would indicate that you are feeling somewhat stressed. And when you're relaxed, 
it'll turn um, blue or green. Green is constant. I had to use this the other day. I had something going on um, at home, and um, <laughs> it was very interesting. I was feeling stressed. There was like a demolition team in my house above me. My um, neighbor um, above me um, moved out, and um, they decided on Thursday that they were going to just remodel, pull up the carpet, and I tell you, it was a mess. I was trying to work on some projects, and it was just I thought I was going crazy. And so I said, where's my car? Where's my stress car? Well, I was stressed. On the back of the car, it tells you what you can do to relieve your stress. So, take deep breaths. Okay, well, that noise was really loud, so deep breathing at that time really didn't help me. It also talks about muscle relaxation. When you hear all that noise going on, you're not really thinking about trying to control your muscles. Visualization. Visualize that you're on a trip somewhere. When you have something stressful at the moment going on, you know, you're not thinking like that, okay? But, there are tips, there are techniques that you can use called cognitive behavior therapy that helps you to look at the situation, step away, and come up with solutions. And so we're going to talk about that tonight. Now, there was a recent study, and it was done last year by the American Psychological Association. And they wanted to find out who in America, who along the generational lines, who's most stressed? And guess what they found? Who's the most stressed? Women. Women are, according to them, an anxious group of people. I wonder why. <laughs> it's because we are doing everything. You know, we have multiple roles. We are wives, mothers, employees. And what's interesting is that men on the job, when they leave their job, guess what? Their stress levels go down. Women, our stress levels go up. Because it's time for that second job, that second shift. You know, we are chauffeurs, we're cooks, we have to do the shopping, the cleaning, homework with the kids. Then there's PTA meetings, football games, basketball games. Then, you know, hubby, he has problems finding his socks. Honey, what are my socks? Can you help me? And then that little six-year-old, he's pulling on your skirt. Mommy! Bedtime story. At the end of the day, you are burned out, stressed out, feeling a little frazzled. But guess what? The next day, you have to get up and do it all over again for 18 years <laughs> for some people. So we have to teach our children how to be independent and learn how to delegate. So what was interesting about this study is that they not only looked at who was most stressed, but they looked at it along generational lines. Guess who among women, who's the greatest stress along the generational lines? Anyone? The millennials. They are stressed out more than anyone. Now those are the group of uh, women that were born after 1980. They're probably around 35 and they have children, they have jobs, and so that's stressful. The next group, Generation X, those are the next group of most stressed individuals. And then followed by the baby boomers. Then of course those that are low income and women that have children that are less than 18. 
So I want you to know that I am so excited that you're here because you're, you have taken the time out of your busy schedule to take care of yourselves. And if we don't do it, who will? So it's time for you to take care of yourselves. Now, I know that if you take just a few of these principles, just a few tools, it's going to improve your life physically, mentally, emotionally, better relationships, better, um, interview, better contact with those individuals on your jobs. So just a few tools and you will benefit. So this here, I thought it was so funny. It was a little cartoon of two women. They decided to go shopping. And one lady says, you know, I'm raising kids, running a house. It really keeps me busy. I also have this little gig on the side called a full-time job, a little gig. And so we have multiple roles, and it never stops, never stops. So we're going to look at stress. What is stress? We're going to look at the effects of stress. How does stress impact our bodies? And then we're going to learn how to control stress. Now, a lot of people say, you know what? I would be fine if my job did not require so much of me. You know, my job is just so stressful. Or, you know, my child, you know, his room looks like, it looks like a bomb has gone off in his room. I mean, it's so junky. Doesn't he know that stresses me out? Or maybe it's your mother-in-law. Everybody likes to pick on mother-in-laws. You know, my mother-in-law is coming over, and when she comes over, you know, it is just so stressful in the house for weeks. So we blame the mother-in-law. And then your hubby, you know, why can't he put the toilet seat down? You know, just put the toilet seat down. Or, you know, it's such a simple thing to put the top on the toothpaste. Doesn't he know that that stresses me out? We define these as our stress sores. But there's a difference. There is a difference between stress and stressors. Now the stress is what the stressors are, what's going on in the external environment. Okay, that kid not cleaning his room, the mother-in-law coming over, the husband not putting the toilet seat down. Those are stressors. Those are the external, what's going on in the environment externally. Now we become stressed when we take what's in the outside and bring it in. And we become victims of stress. And so we don't want to become victims. We want to have control in our lives. Now, we can become sick when we don't learn how to control our stress. And so we need stress, okay? Stress is good. Now, I said stress is bad, but stress is good, it's bad, and it can be ugly. Stress is a survival mechanism. It helps us to gear up and to deal with the stressors in life. Let me just show you a little clip here. Hold on here. Okay, right here. Now, I said that stress is for survival, okay? Okay, we need a little stress. Now, just say that um, you're on a safari. You're out in the Serengeti, you know, you're out watching nature. And then you just happen to see this scene.
up when you looked at that? Did you anticipate that something was going to happen? You know, cheetahs, you know, they're the fastest um, animal out there. And so this cheetah was running after the gazelle. And it's about survival. Both of those animals are stressed out. The cheetah is stressed because he knows that if he can't catch that gazelle, you know, he's going to stop. The gazelle is stressed out because he knows that he can become the cheetah's lunch. And so both of these are stressful events. Their blood pressures went up. Their heart rates went up. They were able to mobilize fat, mobilize sugar, and aid to enable them to move. And so that's the type of stress response that we need. We need to be able to get out of danger. So that's the good part of stress. But the problem is that we, as Americans, we're stressed 24 hours a day. It's as, it is as if we're running from the cheetah all day long. We're stressed about what's going to happen when we retire. We're stressed about taxes. We think about these events, and it turns on the stress response. Elevated blood pressure, which can cause heart disease. It elevates our blood sugar, which can cause diabetes. It alters our immune system, which can cause cancer. So we have to learn to turn off the stress response. Now, let me tell you the ugly part about stress. Now, we've all had situations in which we are somewhat stressed. Did you know that public, spe public speaking is one of the top stressors? A lot of people say that they would rather be dead than to get up and talk in front of people. Well, let me tell you about something that happened to me. It was back in 2000, and I had just landed a job with one of the largest home health agencies in Atlanta. And um, it was in sales and marketing, and I was really looking forward to this job. And so um, I was going to my first board meeting, had been on the job for about a month. First board meeting, got there early, got on the elevator, rode the elevator to the top floor, and all of a sudden, I had little butterflies in my stomach. And I thought, wow, what's wrong with this elevator? Okay? Got off the elevator, walked down to the boardroom, and when I opened the door, there was this huge mahogany table, absolutely beautiful. And then I was just seized with fear, just suddenly seized with fear. And I thought, Okay, this is going to pass. I got some water, started drinking my water, and, and um, members of the team came in, the president, the vice president, and then all of a sudden, after about 45 minutes into the conversations, my boss called upon me to give a report about the area that I, that I was over. And I was like a deer caught in headlines. All of a sudden, I had little tremors. Have you seen that? Those little tremors to take control of my hands. My knees started to knock. And, you know, thank goodness, my legs were under the table. And I just felt, you know, I would rather have a cardiac arrest than to be here. <laughs> but when I finally opened my mouth, a high-pitched squeal <laughs> and an exit. And I felt like crawling under the table. <laughs> well, I made it through. I don't even know if what I said made any sense. <laughs> and after the meeting, my boss said, Darlene, what happened to your boss? <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> Stress. It can get us. Now, that was just one little episode it's something that happened just for the moment. You know, 
everything went back to normal. I'm sure my blood pressure went down, back to normal. But many of us are activating the stress response 24 seven. So let's look at some of the top stressors. What do you think the top stressors are? Job, We're, uh -huh. job, family. Okay, job, family. Well, we're going to money. money. Okay, anybody else? Weight. Okay, weight. Any more? Relationships. Kids. Someone's saying kids. Oh. Someone is saying kids. Okay, do I hear any more? Medical issues. That's a big one. Okay, well, we are going to play a little game here. We're going to play the family feud, if it will come up. It does not want to come up. So, I have a backup system here. Let's see, where is it? Okay. Okay, now someone said finances. Who said finances? Hmm? Okay, finances is number one. The job is number two. Relationships, three. Health, that's a big issue. Number um, four. Diet, lack of sleep, media, and the traffic. And when I say traffic, traffic goes under what is called those daily hassles. You know, you miss your bus, you know, you have a flat tire, something like that. Those are the daily hassles. So these are the top stressors. And then for women, there are additional type of stressors. Um, we have problems with, okay. Well, let's start here with finances. Okay, you get a pay cut, okay? You know, you're making a certain income, and then all of a sudden you lose your job. Pay cuts, bankruptcies, financial emergencies, growing debts, fixed income, retirements, these are financial stressors. And the number one reason couples divorce is because of finances. That's the number one reason. Then work-related stressors. Now, have you ever been on a job, and it's hard when you're, when you're a new employee. You're on a job, and um, you're trying to learn the ropes, and then you talk with someone who is a seasoned person. They've been there forever. And you ask them, okay, um, John, um, can you tell me how to do this certain procedure? And then all of a sudden, they have no clue. Have you ever met those kind of people? They know everything except for what you want. And then they say, well, you know what? We have a policy, a manual, a procedure. And so it's right over there, and it's somewhere buried among those thousand pages. But I'm sure you'll find it. Ever met those kind of people? Relationships. That's a big one. And you have in your handout something on relationships, how to resolve problems. Money is a big one, unexpected, uh, unrealistic expectations, chores, um, marital problems. Health. You know, someone said health. That is a big one, especially if that individual has a chronic disease. You know, something that's not going to be resolved in a hurry. Now, when that individual is in the hospital, you know, they have a doctor, the nurse, the pharmacist, they have a whole team of people taking care of them. But when they go home, you know, you're the cook, you're the doctor, you're the pharmacist, you know, you're the home health aide, you have to do everything. That is a major stressor. Diet is another one. Evelyn touched on diet. There are certain foods 
bad we eat that will cause us to be even more stressed. Sleep deprivation, the media. Media is a growing, a growing stressor. There are individuals that spend hours, hours upon hours on social media. You know, there is um, a person, I'm on Facebook every now and then, just every now and then I'll post something. But there's this one person, I don't know her well, she posts on a frequent basis. It's like, does she ever sleep? I mean, really, she's posting like a hundred posts a day. I'm, 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 I'm serious. It's like, how? That's stressful. I can't imagine trying to keep up and trying to see who many, how many people you can get to post on your site. So media, and then those daily hassles. Other sources of stressors for women, sexual harassment. You're on a job, and you know you need that job, and you're being harassed, a big one. We as women have problems saying no. For some reason, that is not in our vocabulary. We have to learn to say no. We are not superwomen. We can't do everything. Difficulty expressing anger, that's a big one. Fear of failure, the do it all syndrome. Um, perfectionism, you know, we like to have everything, our I's dotted, our T's crossed. Perfectionism. And then the glass ceiling, we as women experience that. We know that we're qualified to do a job, but we're not going to be promoted. We're going to stay in that position, and you have nowhere else to go. That's very stressful. And you're running circles around your male counterparts, and they're making four times the money that you're making, and you're doing a better job. That's stressful. Now, how does stress affect the body? We're going to take a look. 90% of all doctor visits are due to stress. And the majority of those visits are made by, by women. We have physical symptoms. You know, you have that fatigue. You're just tired all the time. You have a um, headache, upset stomach. You know, we tend, as women, to carry our stressors in our body. And it's wearing us out. Now, we also have emotional symptoms. You know, you're feeling a little irritable. You're feeling short-tempered. Maybe you're stressed. You can't get along with your coworkers. You're feeling overwhelmed. You're angry. You're nervous. Oftentimes, it's related to stress. Behavior symptoms. Now, women tend to overeat when they're stressed. We tend to not be able to sleep, waking up early, early in the morning, you know, um, crying, neglecting your appearance. This is often what we as women do um, as far as behavior symptoms. We become confused, um, forgetful, poor concentration, anxious, Race, um, racing thoughts, thinking negative. These are some of the cognitive symptoms of stress. So how does our body react when we're stressed? Now we have um, in our bodies what we call the hypothalamus, we have a pituitary gland, and we have adrenal glands. And when we are stressed, it activates what is called the fight or flight um, response. And so it elevates the blood pressure, the heart rate, it increases muscle flow, as I said earlier. Um, it dilates the pupils, dilates the bronchial tubes, and we have all of that extra energy, which is good when you're running from the cheetah. But the cheetahs are running us every day. So what are the cheetahs in your life? What are you running from? Those of us who are stressed. Now, all of these can cause a 
cascade of problems in our bodies. It can lead to depression, um, bipolar disease, diabetes, cancer, heart disease, and also autoimmune diseases. And so what happens when we are stressed, it causes injuries in the body. And anytime there's an injury, it injures our cells. And anytime there's an injury, there is inflammation. And when there is inflammation, the immune system comes to the rescue, which it should. But when the immune system is involved, it's like a gun. It's just spraying everywhere. And so when it does that, it damages our arteries. It allows the insulin receptors to be um, altered. And so we develop these diseases. So we have to learn to get control over stress before it controls us. Now, men handle their stressors a little differently. You know, we women, we internalize it, we eat. But men, they become more physical. You know, they will fight it out, or they will start drinking. They do alcohol. That's what men do. And let me just show you what how some men react. We don't want to do this when you're stressed on the job. Dare do 
control their stress. So that's what we're going to look at right now. How do we control our stress? Okay. So strategies on managing stress. Now, first of all, you need to find out what's stressing you. Is it your job? Is it your finances? Health? So what is your biggest stressor? Okay? And only you can identify what that is. So you have information that you can look at to tell you what your number one stressor is. So once you identify that, you need to come up with an action plan. Okay? You need to first put it in priority, do an action plan, come up with your top three stressors, and then systematically work them out one by one. Let's say it's finances, okay? You need to start cutting up those credit costs. Maybe you can't eat out as often as you would like to, okay? Maybe you need to sell some of your stuff. So we need to come up with an action plan. <coughs> then we need to set a goal, okay? Where do you want to be at a certain time? You know, um, let's say, where do you want to be a year from now? You need to get support. Are there classes that you need to enroll in? You need to be able to track your progress. And then reward yourself. Not splurge and buy something that's expensive because that defeats the purpose. But you need those little reminders of how well you're doing. And then commit to change. There are also lifestyle and cognitive changes that will help us to reduce stress. So let's look at the interventions for lifestyle. Now exercise, we know that exercise is a big one. And the reason exercise is so um, beneficial is because when we exercise, it allows the brain to release those feel-good hormones. It's a tranquilizer. And um, there are studies that show that exercise is just as beneficial as taking a tranquilizer. So exercise, that's another, that's a big one. And so tomorrow night when we talk about depression and when we talk about on Sunday night rewiring the brain, I will go into more details about how this, how the lifestyle factors are affected. Sleep, you know, when you don't get your sleep, you're cranky the next day, you're moody the next day. And so there are certain times that we need to take advantage of going to sleep. And it's best to get to bed before 10 o'clock. And the reason being is because the brain releases certain hormones at certain times. Have you heard of melatonin? Yes. Melatonin. Melatonin is a hormone that's produced by the pineal gland in the brain. Okay? Now, it is released at night. Okay? When the lights are out, that hormone goes up, and then it helps us to sleep. So we have to get in bed at a certain time because at two o'clock in the morning, it's starting to peak. And as soon as the light, as soon as the sunlight comes out, it just disappears. So there are sleep hygiene, there's information specifically about how to get the best sleep. And we'll go into more detail about that in the next coming days. Deep breathing. Everybody says, you know, just take some deep breaths. That'll make you feel better. Well, you know how that works? It's interesting how that works. Our, in our brain, we have um, what we call the, the um, parasympathetic system, and then we have the sympathetic nervous system, okay? One is like the gas. The sympathetic nervous system, it increases your heart rate, your blood pressure, all of those things when you're running from the cheetah. Now, the parasympathetic nervous system, it's the calming. It slows everything down. So when we take deep breaths, we're activating the parasympathetic nervous system. So it slows the body down. It has a calming effect on the body. So that's why we need to um, do deep breathing. And then our diet. You know, there are certain foods that stress the body. Your sugar, your salt, your fat, junk food, anything with artificial colors, caffeine, um, all of those foods cause a stress reaction in the body. And then the body starts fighting. 
So we need to learn how to incorporate good foods. And we're gonna have a cooking class and then more information on how to um, change your diet and go into more details. And you have that flyer um, in your handout. So stay tuned for that. Negative talk. Are any of you involved in negative talk? Let me raise my hand. I am. Did you know that that stresses the body? It activates, again, an area in the brain called the amygdala. Anyone heard of the amygdala? The amygdala is located right here on both sides of the, in the temporal area. And there are two little glands the size of an arm. And it can be your friend or it can be your foe. Now, when you're running, if you see like a snake, you know, you want to jump back because you know that can be danger, dangerous. That's the amygdala. It's trying to alert you to get out of trouble. It's good. But when we have negative ruminating thoughts, what happens is it activates the amygdala. The amygdala is supposed to talk to the frontal lobe right here. This is the frontal lobe. Our reasoning, judgment, it helps us to make decisions. And so they're constantly talking to each other. The amygdala would say, there is a snake, you need to move. The frontal lobe would say, no, it's just a stick, it's okay. And so you calm down. But when we get into a loop of negative talking, these two circuits, they don't talk. It bypasses. And so we have this continuous loop of ruminating. There are hormones, neurotransmitters, serotonin, that's that feel-good hormone. You know, people who have depression, they give them what is called um, SSRIs, okay, it's serotonin. And serotonin is decreased when we are in a negative loop. Dopamine is another one, that feel-good pleasure. You see that person that you admire, you see that favorite food, you feel good. Those hormones are decreased when we are in a negative loop. And so whenever we think about drives our feelings, and our feelings drive our behaviors, so there are a lot of different type of um, conversations that we get into. Now, you might find this fascinating, I thought it was, that we have anywhere from 30,000 to 50,000 thoughts a day. Has anyone ever thought that they thought that much? <laughs> I'm like, how in the world can I have 30 to 50,000 thoughts a day? But then when you look at the brain, we have the subconscious brain. Subconscious, it has over 400 billion bits. It processes 400 billion bits of information per second. You know, I mean, that's unbelievable, per second. And so we have these constant thoughts that oftentimes does not make it to the conscious mind. And a lot of those thoughts are negative. So what we need to do is to check our thoughts. What are we saying? You know, um, oh, I'm stupid. I can't do anything right. Um, wow, I'll never learn this. You know, if my head wasn't attached to, if my head wasn't attached to my body, I would lose it. Or, you know, it's always something, shoulda, coulda, woulda. And that is a source of stress. And when you're talking like this all day, at the end of the day, you're tired, you're depressed. It's because we've worn ourselves out with our negative um, thoughts. Mm -hmm. And it is estimated that the majority of our thoughts are negative. And that's unfortunate. And I have been practicing looking at my thoughts. You know, our brains are 